Good morning, church. Welcome to University United Methodist Church on this beautiful and bright, sunny Sunday morning. Uh, my name is Zach Landis. If I have not had the pleasure to meet you before, I am the pastor of this church. And I just want to welcome you into this place, especially if you are a guest here. You're an honored guest in this house. And I hope you find this time in worship meaningful to you. I do have a few announcements about things that are going in the lot, on in the life of the church that I want to make you aware about. Um, first is kind of our up, upcoming schedule for this week. So on the back page of your bulletin, you'll find our schedule for this week. Um, one thing is that we are launching our new young adult uh, small group uh, tomorrow night at 6 p.m. There's a location change. So we are moved, instead of it being at our house, we've moved it to the church. For, uh, for child care purposes, because there will be child care available. Um, so that's from 6 to 7. It's actually going to be in my office. We're going to meet in my office, not the Fellowship Hall, but we're going to be here in my office. And so come in the, the Irving Street doors uh, for that um, event tomorrow, which will be our first meeting of that. Um, also, our regular things like over easy theology is going to be tomorrow morning at 7.30 over at Jimmy's Egg. Uh, come for a good theological discussion and some breakfast. Uh, and then Simple Cross, our worship service on Tuesday. Uh, it's going to be the library. And then, of course, Cornerstone on Wednesday. Uh, but we also we have bells this week, too. So we have the full schedule. So we have bells at 5, kids choir at 6.30, and adult choir at 7. So a full uh, day on Wednesday. A few other things is that we are starting our university kids uh, uh, children's ministry on Sunday, April 24th. That's going to be from 4 to 5.30. Uh, that's a new children's ministry. Just think youth group for kids. That's kind of what it's going to be on Sunday afternoons. Uh, so if you have any kids that are interested in that, just um, send them our way on that day. Also, I believe this is in your, in, there's two things I think in your bulletin. One is the Angel Wings uh, sp Chicken Spaghetti Takeout Fundraiser. So this is just more information about the dates and times, about pre-ordering and pickup. If you, uh, does Jan, Jan's here, I saw her somewhere. Uh, see Jan if you need a pickup order form. So they have pickup order forms available for you. And then also the other thing is our new, our directory update list. We had a good response uh, last week for people who have done this, so if you have done this, don't do it again. Uh, but if you have not done it, please do it. Uh, so what we are trying to do is update our directory and our membership list. Um, the, our old directory did not have any uh, markings of whether people were members or not, whether children were baptized or not. So we're trying to gather all that information. We're also trying to gather good email addresses. One thing I want to do after we get this completed is sending out a weekly uh, email devotional and also uh, email Arnold um, with uh, prayer list and some announcements and it'll be things that we can send the entire church family out about um, like funeral notifications and things like that. So we want good emails for everybody. Uh, but then also uh, we have a church council scheduled for next Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. So it's going to be next Sunday at 2 p.m. Uh, I just want to remind everybody that church council is open to anybody. So everybody can come to church council and kind of uh, get uh, knowledge about what is going on in the life of the church. That is not a closed meeting. Um, but, whew, that was a lot of stuff. Did I possibly miss anything? I think that was most of what we need to know about. So let's begin our time of worship by joining together and singing our opening hymn, uh, which is, is it all creatures of our God and King? Right? Yes. All creatures of our God and King. Page 62. And so when you stand in body or spirit as we sing together. <laughs> Thank you. 
Island is joined together in our call to worship this morning. Spring is about to break forth. Feel the wonder and power of God's creative energy. Feel the awe and joy God's love for us. Let us worship God with a full sense of joy and expectation. Let us open our hearts, our spirits, our souls to God's passion. Our second hymn is All Things Bright and Beautiful. Them 
and took them away from where they were living. And so they were living in a distant land, okay? And things were not going well for them. And they were sad, right? Because you guys would be sad, right, if you got taken away by an army to a different country, right? That would not be fun. But you know what Isaiah is saying? Isaiah, in our passage this morning, is saying, you know, God is still God. God delivered them before. God brought them out of a bad situation and into a good situation, right? He's done that before. And Isaiah is reminding them of that. And so he says that everything that God, God is about making new things. And he's trying to give them hope about something new that's going to happen. Okay? Have you guys ever done something new, like brand new, like, or like maybe make a piece of art that's brand new that nobody in the world has ever seen it, or you've gone to some place new? Have you guys done that before? Yeah? Some of you, yes? What do you say? Yeah, sometimes you go to a new restaurant. A what? Where was that? Okay, yeah. You got to the store once, yeah? Does anybody else have a comment? But sometimes when something brand new, right? It's sometimes really fun. Yeah, you have a comment? Oh yeah, like Wichita Mountains we went to yesterday. That was fun. Yeah. But you know, God, he's reminding them that God is about to do a new and amazing and a wonderful thing. And you know what happened? God did a new and amazing and wonderful thing. And he brought them back from captivity and helped lead them back to Israel and to Jerusalem. And so while they didn't have hope, or they were really, really sad, Isaiah was reminding them, God is about to do a new and wonderful thing. And you know what? God hasn't stopped doing that. God is always about bringing about new and wonderful things. Do you guys know that? God doesn't just do the same boring thing again and again and again and again. God does new stuff all the time, right? You know, God's going to do new stuff here at this church. God's going to do new stuff at your house, at your school. God is always about doing new things. Okay? Do you think you can remember that? Yes. Now, the one thing we have to do is that when God is doing a new and amazing thing, we have to be ready for it. Right? We have to be ready to go, okay, I'm on board. Right? I'm going to go do that new thing, right? Instead of going, oh, I've never done that before. I'm not doing it. Right? We have to be ready for what God is done, going to do. Okay? Think you guys can do that? Yeah. All right. I like that enthusiastic answer. Let's have a prayer before we go back and sit down, okay? And I'll say a line, and I want you guys to repeat it, okay? Good morning, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for prophets like Isaiah. And thank you for all the new and wonderful things. Help each of us be ready for those things. Amen. All right, thanks for coming down, guys. I now want to draw you to our time of prayer today, where we lift our joys and our concerns up to God. I do want to draw your attention to the back page of the bulletin first. There is our prayer list for the week. These are all of our members and our friends and family that have been asked to be in your prayers throughout this week. And I hope that you take that bulletin home with you and pray for those people by name um, each day this week as we are committed to our prayers. Um, also, um, if you have anybody that need, needs to be added to that, um, just let us know about that. We would love to add those. Um, just let us know in the church office and we'll get those printed um, next week. Um, also, just a reminder that if you, um, as now the COVID numbers are really, really down, 
lot of hospitals and surgery places are uh, allowing pastors to come back in. And so if you have a procedure or a surgery or anything that, or something that you want me to go see, um, please let me know about that. Um, I've always liked to tell people I, I'm good at doing pastoral care. I'm a terrible psychic. Um, I do not just know that people are in the hospital. Um, so just let me know. I'm more than willing to go uh, to pray with you before a surgery or a procedure uh, or to sit with your family members as they're waiting. Uh, so just let me know about those things. I am here to, to do all that for you. But what other joys or concerns do you have for today that you'd like to lift up? Um, Sam?
holy God, you have shown us many times that going backward is not the way for us. We can't go backwards or back in time. We can only move forwards. So God, show us that path once again and take our hands and lead us down it. Show us that there are things that we must leave behind. We don't have to forget them, but there are some things we just can't bring along with us into the future that you have in store for us, this bright and beautiful future. So God, call us into that future. Keep our eyes looking forward to those wonderful things that you have planned for us. And help us to be your people. Help us to be your people that are people of praise and people of thanksgiving. And God, also be with those who we have lifted in prayer this day. We know there's conflict and strife all around this world and in our own community. We know there are people who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We know there are people who are facing surgeries and other procedures and others who are battling illnesses. We lift them all up to you, O oh God, knowing that you hear our prayers and that you respond and ways that your heavenly wisdom knows to respond. So we lift them in this whole prayer up to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, our leader who shows us the way and who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture passage for today comes from the, the book of Isaiah. I'll be reading from chapter 43. This is uh, verses 16 through 21. Thus says the Lord, 
who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down and they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I will water in for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people. The people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of Scripture. Would you pray with me? Lord, take my lips and speak through them. And take our ears and open them so we may hear your word for us. And then take our hearts and our lives and just fill them with your love. So that and then guide us, O oh God, so that we may, may be your faithful servants, grounded in your word and in your love. Amen. <clears throat> so in the time before plains and bridges, when pioneers or explorers would go out and, and explore new places, when they would encounter things like a river or a lake or a body of water, it was an obstacle for them, right? We have the modern conveniences of bridges and planes and things that when we cross over a body of water, we hardly even think about it. But back in the day, like in the time of the early explorers of our country when they were moving from the East Coast and, and moving west, going to the frontier, into the unknown, they, when they encountered things like a lake or a river, it was an obstacle. It was something that they had to either go around or had to find a different path or had to find a way to cross it, through like a bridge or a, a, a raft or something like that. Sometimes the obstacles we face are different in life, but we too face obstacles. A few years ago, I was reading a book that's called Canoeing the Mountains. It was a, it's a book that was about adapting to change and, and, and innovation. And it wasn't necessarily written for churches, but uh, necessarily, but it, it's been used by a lot of churches, but it was more of a corporate thing. But what they did is they, they kind of followed and wove, wove in and, and learned the lessons from the, uh, the expeditionary uh, uh, task force of Lewis and Clark. Now, if you don't know Lewis and Clark, they were uh, famous explorers. Uh, this was back in the day before trains and planes and, and all kinds of things and bridges, right? And they were sent out to, this was after the Louisiana Purchase, after Thomas Jefferson uh, acquired that. They were told to go and find a, a path to the Pacific Ocean or to the western edge of, of this landmass that, that was completely unexplored. And so they had this idea, they were like, you know, when we encounter, uh, when we try to do a land uh, expedition, we always encounter rivers and lakes. These, these rivers seem pretty big and pretty long, so let's go use, utilize the rivers. And so they, for the most part, said they had a canoeing and a raft task force that kind of set out. And they thought they were going to just canoe all the way to the Pacific Ocean. And they canoed all the way until they hit the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> That's why it's called canoeing in the mountains. Because sometimes there's obstacles that we encounter that are unknown. And sometimes they're monumental to where it's like crossing the Mississippi when you don't have a boat or trying to get over the Rocky Mountains when you're in a boat. You see, our scripture passage today comes from a time when the people of Israel could only see the obstacles. They could only see the hardships that were present in their life. The, their main focus was that the fact that they were exiled, right? This was after the, the Babylonians and the Assyrians had come in and had 
wiped out Jerusalem and had taken a lot of the, the people of Israel, the people of God, out away into captivity. It was an exile that lasted for more than a generation. And they couldn't see what God was doing. They didn't even know that God was still, they thought God had abandoned them. That God had allowed this to happen. For they had lost everything, their land, their, their homes, and their livelihood. At this point in their history, they had forgotten that their God is the same God that brought them out of Egypt. Out of slavery in Egypt and had brought them to the, through the wilderness and into the promised land. It's the same God that made water strike, you know, come out of a rock in the wilderness and manna fall from heaven. They had forgotten all of that. They had forgotten all that God had provided for them. Even in the, the worst circumstances in life, they, they had given up on seeing what the future was. They could only see that what was in the past, those barriers that they're exiled, that they have no longer in their homeland, no longer in Jerusalem. And in our passage today, Isaiah is speaking as a prophet on God's behalf to the people in exile. He is trying to remind them that they are people of hope because their God never forgets them. That even though they are in a really difficult circumstances, that they see barriers all around them, that God is still working to bring about something new and beautiful. Isaiah starts this in our passage by reminding them of one of the most pivotal moments in their faith history, the Exodus story, of when God delivered his people from Israel, from slavery in Egypt, or slavery in Egypt sorry, not Israel, and Isaiah reminds them how God made a path when there was no way. Reminding them that even when they encountered that red, the Red Sea, this body of water, God made a new way when there was no way. When water was a barrier, he removed that. When they were in the wilderness, in the desert, and, and thirst was a barrier, he removed that by bringing stream of living water up. God always had a new way. And he was reminding them, Isaiah was reminding them of this. This is why it is really important for them to remember that even in the midst of their exile, it was important for them, but it's also important for us. We're not in exile. We're not facing persecution like the early church did. But we have different, we have other barriers. We have other hardships, right? We have to remember this too. Because even if it's in your own life, maybe you're in a personal moment of hardship. Maybe you're experiencing a personal barrier. Whatever it might be, we have to remember that there is no obstacle that God can't overcome. Especially when we are looking towards God and the future and this new thing that God has in store for us. In addition to this important reminder from Isaiah to remember the past, Isaiah tells them not to remember. It's kind of an interesting thing. He opens up about saying, now remember God is the one who delivered you. God makes a path when there is no path. Remember that. But then right after that, he says, don't remember. <laughs> don't dwell on the past. But what he's really saying is that, you know, remember who God is. But don't live in the past. Don't dwell in the past. Don't dwell on these obstacles or these bad things that have happened to you. Instead, be looking towards the future. Because you ever, have you ever known anybody that lives in the past? Have you ever known anybody that just, you know, is always talking about what happened back in the past or back in high school or about that touchdown or whatever it was, football? It just seems like their best days were behind them. 
or maybe a church that was living that way. Have you ever been a part of a church that was just trying to relive the glory days? Or they were always talking about, oh, back then, back then, back then. You see, it isn't always a good thing to be looking backwards. It's okay to remember the past. It's okay to remember things that have happened in the past. Like partway through the journey in the wilderness, the people of Israel, when they were encounter encountering barriers and hardship in the, in the wilderness, they were like, let's go back to Egypt, guys. Yeah, it was slavery. Yeah, it was horrible. But at least it was something we knew. See, I think it's really important advice for us today, what Isaiah is talking about. I think we can remember. I think it's a good things for church to know their history, for us to know our own personal histories. But there's only one place where we can really live, and that's the present. And there's only one direction we can really look forward to, and that's forward. So the, I know a lot of people have different kind of uh, ways that they look or perceive things. But there are definitely people who aren't living in the present because they're stuck in the past. But the only way we can really truly live into who God wants us to be is by living in the present and looking towards the future. Looking towards that new wonderful creation, that new beautiful thing that God is about to do. We can't have the, you know, there's always a joke of, of, between pastors. It's like, oh, I'm about to meet with my back to Egypt committee. We can't have anything looking backwards, right? We have to be moving forwards. And then once we know that we can't move backwards, my friends, then what must we do? It's living into this future that God has in store for us. In our passage today, God, or Isaiah is telling about this new thing that God is about to do. It's a reminder for them that even though things look bleak, right? Even though they're in exile, God is going to do something new. And we have the benefit of knowing that that happened, right? That God brought them back out of exile and back to Jerusalem in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. To rebuild Jerusalem, to rebuild the temple, and to reestablish their lives back in Israel. Isaiah helped them remember their past, but also pointed them to their future, that future that God was about to do a new thing, and they lived into that. But our call today is to live into that new thing that God is doing. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean giving up everything that we've ever done or giving up our history, but it's, being, it's about being ready for the things that God is going to do. And I don't know about you, but in the eight or nine months that I've been here, I have just continually grown more and more excited about the possibilities of and the things that are happening here at this church at University of United Methodist Church. While we have a wonderful history full of lots of highlights, full of lots of wonderful and glorious things, and so I don't want to diminish any of that. But I think just as important as about remembering our faith history, we can't just be living like it's 1970 or 1980 or whatever year you want to pick out. <clears throat> we have to live forward. Instead of seeing the, the barriers or the problems, what we have to see are the possibilities. Those new things that God is going to do. Instead of saying what, what is known as the, this is what's known as the seven last words of a church. Kind of modeling like the seven last words of Christ. It says, We've never done it that way before. Now please do not hear me. I'm not doing this sermon because everything's about to change. I'm not doing this because we're about to 
do away with things. That is, for, that couldn't be further from the truth. Here, Cap. Nothing is going away. But we are doing some new things. Tomorrow we're starting a new young adult ministry. In a couple weeks we're, we're restarting our children's program. We also are hoping to live into a new season with the Wesley Campus Ministry. There are new things coming. Are we going to be ready for it? Are we going to be ready to do whatever we need to do to become the church God is leading us to become? Now we're going to take all of the good and wonderful things that we currently do kind of with us because those are good things. But we're going to be adding to those, and we just can't say, oh, we haven't done that before. Now, if I were to suggest, like, putting a water slide back to street here, okay, tell me that. <laughs> Not a good idea. <laughs> but some things about discipling our, our young adults, our young children, having a good relationship with our, our Westless Ke Wesley Campus ministry, those are all good, bright, and beautiful things that God is making new here. So let's be ready to jump on board to those things. So may we all remember this wonderful history that we have as a church family. But may we also remember that we can't live in that past. That we have to live into this future that God is calling us to. And may we all get on board for this exciting and new thing that God is leading us to. Amen. Now, my friends, our time in worship is continuing as we are about to take the Lord's Supper. I know my mic is cutting in and out, but I hope you can hear me. We are going to go through the, uh, through the liturgy of the Great Thanksgiving as we prepare to receive communion together. And so would you join with me in, our, in the prayer of the Great Thanksgiving? The Lord be with you. Also be. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from slavery, from captivity, and made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and with all of the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks. He gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and in thanksgiving, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, 
one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast in the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I invite our two helpers to come up now. All right, my friend, the table is set for you, but before we begin, I want to remind you a few things. Uh, at the United Methodist Church, we celebrate an open communion table. That means that all are welcome to come forward and to receive this invitation from Christ. That does, this is not our table, this is the Lord's table. So you don't have to be a member of this church or any church. All you have to do is be willing to, uh, uh, this invitation comes from Christ. And you just have to be willing to respond to that. I'm going to invite you to come in the direction of our ushers. We're going to come down the center aisle. You're going to see the bread for me and then the cup. You can go either way, back to your chair, by the outside aisle. But would you come for the table is set?
Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself for us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And my friends, our time in worship is coming to a close, but I will not want to end our time without making an invitation. If you're somewhere along your faith journey, maybe it's just beginning, maybe you've not been baptized before, or become a member of this church, I, I would love to talk with you and pray with you about that. If you just, if you're a member of another church, but just wish to join this church and become an official member, uh, you can do that by coming up at the close, at, as we singing this last hymn, or we can join all together, uh, or we can uh, do that in a more private setting later uh, after church or later this week. Um, that invitation is there for you to respond to it. But let us all stand in body or spirit as we sing our closing hymn, which is This is a Day of New Beginnings. Amen. Mm-hmm.